I'd like to take this opportunity to provide perspective on the 10 years during which I've been your health officer and the director of the health district. First, I want to emphasize how proud I am of the health district and its staff. Much has been accomplished during the past 10 years and with committed leadership, much more will be accomplished over the next 10 years. Of course, even the best leadership cannot succeed without well-trained, dedicated, hard-working staff on the front lines. So I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to all who have contributed to our successes past and present. I want to highlight just a few of these successes in which I'm proud to have played a role. First are some emergency responses, including one I noted in an article published in the Everett Herald on March 4th. The 2009 H1N1 influenza pandemic posed a serious global challenge. A vaccine was produced remarkably fast, but the entire public health community struggled with how we would get it quickly to those at highest risk. Thanks to the strong relationships we had built with the medical community, we created an extraordinary approach. Public health provided logistical support, while the medical community actually staffed mass vaccination clinics around the county. Over three separate days, this collective effort vaccinated nearly 26,000 people at highest risk, to my knowledge, more than any other Washington County managed over the same interval. And lest anyone think such a response to communicable diseases is a remotely rare event, I point to the current mumps outbreak. Many unvaccinated students are being excluded from school. To prod those families to get their children vaccinated, health district staff negotiated with the Department of Health and several local clinics to round up vaccine that was administered by our community partner, Passport Health, at a special clinic a couple Saturdays ago. 18 Everett Public School students were vaccinated and can now resume classes. And this week is the anniversary of another event that proved the value of public health responding to a crisis. It's one that was well known to altogether too well to all of you, the SR 530 mudslide, when health district staff quietly worked in the background to assure the safety of professional responders, volunteers, and homeowners in the vicinity of the mudslide. A second achievement is the advance of public health policies that will save lives and improve the quality of life for all of us. Our staff assured 100% compliance with the smoking in public places law and then helped cities to pass tobacco-free parks ordinances. Through an inclusive public process, staff and the board enacted and implemented a local vaping ordinance, and I'll especially call out Sam Lowe's uh, extraordinary leadership through that effort. That helped prod the state legislature to enact a statewide law. And last year, the board enacted and staff moved to implement a local drug take-back ordinance together with several other recently enacted local ordinances. This has prompted the state legislature once again to consider a statewide action, a statewide drug take-back program. These policies are arguably the most potent tools we have to protect the public's health. Of course, public policy and the programs that follow policy must be driven by data. Health district staff have worked tirelessly to monitor the health of county residents and to make sure that the data we have is not simply readily available, but is used to inform our work and the work of our community partners. The data have alerted us to communicable disease outbreaks and to trends in chronic diseases like obesity and diabetes and to injuries like drug overdoses. Our assessment staff pulled together a community health assessment and then worked with community partners to craft a community health improvement plan, data leading to action. I also want to acknowledge the community partnerships that we have built over the past decade. Staff have engaged with many organizations, but I've been most closely involved with our medical community. Beyond the many health alerts over the years, I served on several boards. With the board of the Snohomish County Medical Society, I helped bring Project Access Northwest to Snohomish County to serve people who are unable to access specialty care. I later served on the Project Access Board, um, and I've represented public health on the board of the Washington State Medical Association, assuring that organization support for legislation like vaping and funding for public health. I was a founding member of the Snohomish County Health Leadership Coalition, which implemented projects to encourage middle schoolers to be more active 
and seniors to prepare for decisions at the end of life, something I've confronted even more directly in the past several weeks. As vice chair of the governing body of the North Sound Accountable Community of Health, I've helped this organization define its role in the future of clinical care while always remaining committed to the upstream determinants of health. And I've helped to grow the foundational public health services model that is the basis for the legislation that has passed the State House, is awaiting action in the Senate, and is the critical first step to securing additional state funding. Of course, an effective communication strategy and the staff with skills to carry it out are key to getting public support for public health policies and programming and the funding to implement them. We have a truly great team, and I call out Heather Thomas here, that has built strong relationships with healthcare providers as well as local media and the communications teams for community partners, including hospitals, clinics, schools, childcare providers, and first responders. The result is that we can get our messages out early accurately and credibly. Yes, we've achieved much, but there is much to do. As I turn now to the future, I want to set the context not unfamiliar to you. Funding is tight, but the demands are increasing. The population rises inexorably. New diseases pop up unexpectedly, like Ebola and Zika. Old diseases recur with twists, like multidrug-resistant tuberculosis and complex issues like opioids and homelessness erupt with a vengeance. At the same time, technology keeps evolving, demanding a race to avoid obsolescence, specialized staff to support it, and constant training to use it. Meanwhile, the healthcare system is in flux, some might even say chaos, obscuring all the critical work of public health. As everyone focuses on how to pay for care that accounts for only a fraction of course, this presents both challenges and opportunities, but it definitely demands focus and energy. And then there is the effort to reshape public health in Washington, especially at the regional level, a worthy effort that again demands focus and energy. Finally, amidst all this change, we are struggling to maintain our extraordinary workforce. So bear with me as I offer some observations and recommendations. When I arrived in 2007, the economy was booming. Although state and county funding had been flat for years, federal dollars had increased, especially to support chronic disease prevention and emergency preparedness. Consequently, the board actually authorized expanding the services that the health district offered. And I suspect that Donna will recall this, notably to support the health of mothers and newborns. We served thousands of families through home visiting programs. We had a robust healthy communities team building community driven efforts to promote healthy nutrition and physical activity in Marysville and Linwood with plans to expand to other cities. Our partners in child care program provided on site consulting of licensed child care facilities throughout the county, helping to assure that those facilities were safe, offered healthy foods, and promoted each child's emotional, social, and intellectual development. We sampled for mosquitoes carrying West Nile virus and worked closely with community partners to develop a plan to manage pandemic influenza. We offered immunizations, treatment of sexually transmitted infections, and services to keep people healthy when traveling overseas. We collaborated with other counties in our region to reduce the transmission of HIV and to assure treatment of those already infected. We were able to achieve a lot in those days because we had the staff and the financial backing to do so. When I started, we had 227 full-time equivalents. Today, we have 137. We've not been able to do more with less, but our staff have done remarkable work given the limitations. That being said, this is where I implore you to carry on the efforts which I and so many others have been working on tirelessly. First, it is critical that public health be funded adequately. Sustaining current funding is not adequate. It's not enough. Additional funding is needed to allow us to address all the communicable disease, chronic disease, and injury challenges that persist or even are increasing. We need funding to assure that we address the upstream underlying causes of death and disability, especially focusing on early childhood development. We need sufficient funding to assure that we can respond fully to threats to our environment. And 
we need the resources to fully prepare for any emergencies. This will take courage and leadership from the board to accomplish alongside our staff. Second, it is critical that public health reshape itself to more effectively and efficiently provide the services that address the bulk of health problems. Services that complement medical care, but go well beyond and without which medical care will make little difference. This reshaping will take several forms. Cross-jurisdictional sharing of AIDS prevention and emergency preparedness resources have been a part of the North Puget Sound region, but expanded approaches are getting renewed attention in our region. Continued collaboration with the medical and human services communities <clears throat> is essential to better define the respective roles of each so that we work towards the same health goals while taking advantages of the strengths of each. This will mean that the health district build its capacity in assessment, communications, policy development, and community engagement while continuing to move beyond the individual level services that the medical and human services communities are accustomed to delivering and are best prepared to deliver as medical practice evolves amidst the uncertainties of healthcare reform. Third, public health must strengthen existing partnerships as with hospitals and schools and build new ones as with law enforcement agencies, nonprofits, and employers in order to more effectively address the complex problems of today. Public health must exercise leadership, which means not only that the health district's leaders must be empowered to engage the community, but also that all members of the board must be forceful ambassadors to their communities. You are elected to represent your constituents, but you also owe them your informed perspective and guidance. Finally, public health must take full advantage of its greatest asset, its people. I started this farewell address by acknowledging the extraordinary work of our staff. We need to assure these assets will be used most effectively to improve health. This is the responsibility of the health district's leadership team to motivate and guide our staff, but also to hold our staff accountable. This requires a nimble organization that reshapes itself to meet new challenges and opportunities. The board and the community expect results, which come from attentive leadership and an organizational structure responsive to change. This can be uncomfortable at times for staff and even for the board, but I urge you to empower the health district's leadership to be bold. Set the target or vision and let the health district's leadership determine the best path to achieve it. The Snohomish Health District is a proud agency, deservedly so. It has served the people well for 58 years. There will continue to be changes, new diseases, health conditions, technologies, at-risk populations, but I have no doubt that the Health District will continue its proud service. This organization will continue its work to make Snohomish County one of the healthiest places in the world to live, work, and play. It has been an honor and a privilege to lead this agency for the last 10 years. Now I turn over the reins to you and to the staff to carry it forward. I'll be watching and cheering you on from the sidelines. If I can ask only one thing, it's made me proud. Thank you. received his Doctor of Medicine from the University of Colorado in 1978 and his Master's in Public Health from the University of Washington in 1989. Whereas Gary has been a doctor for nearly 40 years, practicing medicine in rural and urban settings, as a family doctor caring for all ages and illnesses, and as a physician focused on AIDS. And whereas speaking specialized in public health in 1984, Gary has served at all levels of government, at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Washington State Department of Health, Social and, Serv Social and Health Services, 
and the public health agencies in Thurston, Skagit King, and Snohomish counties. And whereas Gary has represented the health district and the Snohomish County on a number of boards, including the Snohomish County Medical Society, the Snohomish County Health Leadership Coalition, and the North Sound Accountable Community of Health, and the Washington State Medical Association. And whereas, after a long and distinguished career, Gary is ready to retire and enjoy some well-deserved relaxation and travel adventures with his wife, Judy. And whereas, Gary's passion for public health and genuine respect and care for both the staff at the Health District and the people of Snohomish County has set a high bar for his successors to follow. Now, therefore, be it resolved that it be proclaimed that the Snohomish County Health District Board of Health hereby proclaims our deep, deep appreciation to Dr. Gary Goldbaum for his unwavering service at the Snohomish County Health District and thanks him for his professionalism, commitment, integrity, dedication to public health, given this day of March 20th, 2017. Thank you, Gary. <laughs>